Hey everybody! Today, um, well right now actually, I'm picking up my daughter from preschool, but after that, we're gonna talk about master royalties and the income that comes from a master recording. It's gonna be riveting! Uh, this is actually the second time I've shot shooting this. I did one and it it was like fucking like 30 minutes long. So this is gonna be a lot more succinct and it's gonna be all about master income. So I'm gonna go pick up my daughter. She's obsessed with vlogs right now. She's She wants to make her own vlog, so we'll see if she performs for you guys a little bit. But So follow me around, we'll start chatting and I'll tell you about how you can get paid. Hey look, you're on the vlog. Wanna say hi to the vlog? Hi! Say hi vlog! No. <laughs> hi vlog. What'd you learn today? Um, about Z. The letter Z. What starts with Z? Zebra and zombie. Zebra and zombie. Very good. Should we go get, I want to get a coffee. Do you want to have a, a donut or something? Or a muffin? Or a coffee? Donut. Alright, let's go. I can't have you on when I'm driving though, it's illegal. So, master income. There's lots of royalty streams that come from a song. I've talked about this in my publishing video. But yeah, we're only talking about master income right now. I wanted to talk about this one as its own separate royalty stream because this one is basically where all the juice is. This is this is my go-to for making money as an indie music. As an indie music? As an indie musician. Let's take that off. Is that better or is it too dark? Let's dim that a little bit. Uh, there's a Basically two main ways that I make money off of master recording ownership. Just look at my dyed finger. You know, I'm gonna cut to a vlog at the end of this. Juliet and I have been doing experiments today, so you'll see that later. Number one, number one, number one, mechanical royalties. So this is uh, essentially gonna be, you know, anything that comes from, if you're an independent artist distributing from TuneCore or DistroKid or CD Baby or any of that stuff, this is all the stuff that's gonna end up in your sales account online. Uh, some of them work on taking a percentage, some of them work on a fee. I use TuneCore, it works on a fee. You pay X amount to release a single. They just collect basically all the sales and streaming master revenue for you, your mechanicals. Yeah, and it goes right into a, a base, basically like a virtual bank account that's on their site. And when you take money out, you can just say how much you want to take out, it goes to PayPal, and then you can hook PayPal up to your bank account. I like to keep a bunch of money in there. It's good rainy day money. I use it to pay my tax at the end of the year, which I just got crushed on. So whatever you want, I mean, you can leave money in there to pay for future releases, or you could take money out and use it to buy food and continue to survive as an independent musician. When you're getting these streaming revenues, these mechanical royalties for streaming, it's kind of hilarious how badly the DSPs pay. You gotta own your master if you wanna do anything on streaming. So Spotify pays like maybe 0 .004 for a stream, I think in Canada, which is kind of crazy. You need like 5 million streams to make $20,000, which is not really a huge income. On the songwriter side of things, is a kind of a story for another time, but essentially you're getting paid 10 times worse than that as a songwriter. The DSPs will pay in Canada, for example, the CMRRA, which is like the Canadian musician publisher, yeah, whatever it is. C There's a P now? CM CMRRA, Canadian Musical Reproduction Rights Association. So Spotify pays them. They pay your publisher, your publisher pays you. If you don't have a publisher, go sign up at CMRRA. Uh, you can become an affiliate and they'll just pay you directly. So yeah, still on the point of sales and streams, if you do have a distributor, like a, a traditional distributor, because you get them to release your music to all the DSPs and all this, you know, iTunes and, and that kind of stuff. And maybe it's physical as well, if anyone ever buys CDs now. 
And then, you know, they'll be your point of contact. They're the face of your distribution. They'll, they'll collect everything for you and, and account for it. So then they'll take a cut, probably pay you out a couple times a year. It's, you know, completely useless. If you ask me as an indie, they are not doing anything you can't do. TuneCore, District Kids, CD Baby, you're doing the exact same thing and not having to pay a massive percentage. So I don't understand distribution deals. That's just me. I mean, if they're doing something that you can't do, like some some intense marketing stuff, or maybe they can lobby for award shows or any of that kind of stuff. If they're doing that, great. If they have some relationships you can leverage, but that's more of a label thing. Okay, so, uh, like I was... I gotta take a quick Barbie break. Come back here, come back here. I'm gonna get you. Come back. Next, um, here I am. I'm out looking out my kitchen window here. This is always my this is my social media vlogging spot. The other way, licensing, and I think there's kind of two subcategories of licensing that are essentially the bulk of where you're gonna make money off your master. One is sync, so through a publisher or a sync house of some sort, whether it's an admin or a publishing deal, you can license your song, your recording, uh, to TV, film, commercials, video games, all that stuff, X amount of time for X amount of dollars. It's it's a limited license and it's kind of great. That's It's huge money if you can get it, but it's really tricky to land syncs. You know, probably 2% of the time, the pitch sync that someone's interested in will land because there's infinite amount of music out there, but it's a great way to do it. And the other licensing thing you can do uh, is license to a label. If you want to do a deal with a label and you have a great master, there might be some leverage there to make some dough, they would basically take control of your master for X amount of time or perpetuity, depending on the deal you sign, and they would make the master income and you would hopefully get some sort of money in return for that. Um, haven't seen too many of those deals that really make sense unless there's massive marketing dollars involved. I guess that's the two main licensing things that I can think of. My house is a disaster. Yeah. So the next thing is Okay, this is kind of complicated. This is performance royalties you can get. Typically, a lot of songwriters and musicians know that when your song is played on the radio, there's going to be a company like in Canada, SoCan, that pays songwriters, or BMI, or ASCAP, or whatever in the States. But there's also a way that the master owner and the performer can get paid. Uh, in America, the one I use is called Sound Exchange. <laughs> Absolutely life-changing. It essentially collects two streams for me. Since I'm the master owner, that's one. I'm also the artist on the track, so that's two, and it, the, the main money generator on that stream is Sirius XM. Terrestrial Radio might pay one dollar for a, a spin in a major market, but Sirius XM pays like twenty to forty dollars per spin. That's been a huge part of my income now. There's another one in Canada called Resound that you can check out. I'll, uh, I'll link all this stuff below too. There's, there's a ton of information to check out. So there's tons of ways you can get paid without being a master owner and I'll leave that in the next video. Yeah, ultimately owning your master is kind of where it's at. That's where all the good money is and that's what I recommend you try and do as often as possible. When you sign a deal, ultimately you should remember that you become the commodity. So the label's primary goal is to turn a profit and they're gonna be using your recording to do that. So if you're prepared and you have a plan, great, but just know that you're the product at that point. You're not profiting as much as they are from the master recording side of things. So own as many masters as you can, you know, do collaborations, whatever you can do to get a piece of that, then make sure you're collecting at all these different places. So I'm gonna link all those companies that basically pay out royalties. I'm gonna link them below. Check out FYI Music News. It's a Canadian music industry newsletter that has tons of great info. Um, you're probably gonna wanna stay up to date on, so check that out. Hold on. Uh, just checking my list. All right, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I've been in this business for, I don't know, 15 or so years and I'm still figuring stuff out. I just got off the phone with my publisher asking about royalty rates and things like that and it's, it's confusing. So if you guys have anything you want me to touch on or clarify or any questions for me, make sure to hit me up on my Instagram DM or you can just leave a comment below. And also make sure to check those links because I think you'll get something out of them. Really, really cool stuff. It's almost three. I better go pick up my other kid.
Hey guys, it's Dan Davidson here. Check out some other videos here, here, and don't forget to subscribe. Ha, 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 ha.